Hello everyone, Shadowman here. This is the beginning of a new building project, and therefore a new video series, Let's Build Season 2. However, this time I'm not wanting to build a ball machine. This time I'm going to build a robot, and this is going to be fully mechanical and programmable, so that's going to be a challenge to set up. And so I plan on explaining the process behind building it. Um, so right here, I didn't want to just have to take a video of a empty floor the whole time so I have some mechanisms already built these are just transmissions which is really the main component of any mechanical automation project these here are just basic transmissions so they just take a constant input and then have the output either turning or not turning and these will be used a lot in the machine just to make um, stuff that can be conditionally turned on or off. This here is the most simple version. I probably like this the most just because of its simplicity, even though it does use the most gears. So this really isn't much of anything new, but I just thought I would build a little prototype of it anyway. This one right here is one that uses two gears. And you can see how it switches right here. This right here uses a coupling which allows one rod to slide around freely and yet still be attached to the main rod with the input right here. And I haven't made an actual switching mechanism for these yet. This is just a concept. I'm not really sure if I'll use all of these transmission designs. This one right here actually uses no gears at all even though there's these gears on the outside just so it's easy to turn the rods. So this one, this part right here is supposed to be stationary and not rotate but it's supposed to move back and forth and it uses a coupling and then there's a tan clip on the inside let's see if I can get a better view here um yeah so that tan clip will engage into the white connector if I, I don't know why it's okay there we go it goes that way it's hard to hold the camera and do this at the same time. Okay, this will be a lot easier. So here's the input that's spinning, and the output is just stationary, and then put it that way, and now the output is spinning. The only problem with this transmission is that there's a lot of flexibility between these two outputs, or not two outputs, but the input and the output. You can see that if I just hold the input like this and then twist the end. And in a robot, that's going to be a problem because things have to be as precise as possible. However, if I am in, ever in the need for something that uses no gears, then this will be what I go to. I might as well just explain all of these. So this middle one here is actually from the depot and it is the actual transmission that I saved. So that has, it's been sitting around for, what, two years or something? This is a more basic version that uses a lot of gears. So you've probably seen something like this before, because I used a similar one in Citadel. So I don't really need to show very much of that one. The one thing I do like about this one is how it easily locks in place because of this weight, but it does use up a lot of space. So I came up with this version. This uses the coupling system that I used over there. And you can see that right there. Uh, let me put this on a tripod so I can better explain it. This part is the input, as you can see from the gear. And there's the coupling in there. The switching part has all been done, and this is a pretty compact design, which is why I really like it. But that will make it harder to see the inside. But here it is switching. And there's the gear, either that one or that one. So it'll spin like that, and then you can see the output turning direct, its direction. And this one is a lot more simple. It um, has a lot more simple locking mechanism. It just has this flexible part right here, so it only wants to be on one side. And these transmissions also work a lot better if the input is currently spinning, which 
won't be a problem because it will be spinning. <laughs> but this is the preferred des design that I'm using. I guess I'll go over this one over here too. So with these transmissions, you have to keep in mind that it's also going, going to require some force to switch it depending on how much torque is on the output. And this transmission right here is really just a way to easier make it easier to switch it if there is um, high torque. The only problem, problem is that this one is pretty big. It uses two differentials and it uses the lock mechanism right here. You can't really see it from one side, but there's also a lock on this end. And either one of, only one of those is locked at one time. So let's see here. The output is over here and the input's right there. You have to make sure to spin the output in the right direction. So, yeah, so you can see it spinning like that. And if I switch it that way, it starts spinning in the other direction. And this one's pretty seamless when it comes to switching just because it doesn't have to mesh any gears. And that's really nice if that becomes a problem. The only issue with this one is that it does use more gears just to get from one end to the other, and so there will be a lot of flexibility right there. I'm not really sure if I'll have to use that one, but I thought I would come up with that anyway. I guess I will show this. This is actually just a combination of two types of transmissions, and this is one I actually plan on using in the robot. All the others are just kind of prototypes. This just uses the forward and reverse transmission right here. Right here we just have a double um, simple transmission that can lock in one side or the other. Before I build anything else I really do have to explain how the thing is going to work overall rather than just the mechanisms. So let's see where did I... here it is. So it's going to work with a bunch of pins on a chain and this right here is just me messing around with lots of different designs. But the one that I like the most, let's see, where is it? It's probably this one, except I'm going to use red connectors because I don't have enough of the light gray ones. For each motor in the robot, and there's going to be three motors to allow to have three degrees of freedom, which means it can position an object anywhere in a 3D space. So anyways, for each motor, we're going to have one of these chains and each chain has a bunch of pins on it. Right now these are all in the neutral position, but say I put one over there, then that could be, say, the forward on the transmission. And then this one can make it go the other way, the reverse. So now we have a way to control, in time, a motor turning on or off, or forward and reverse. And this chain is going to be moving at the same speed as that motor because I'm going to hook the chain up right here and these are both attached to the same thing. You can see them both spinning at the same speed. So I have to figure out a way to make this go along and then have pins or some way of transferring that into switching this back and forth or putting it into neutral, which this transmission does have a neutral position right in the middle, right here. And I know there's not a gear on the output yet, but I haven't put that in just yet. So like I said, there's going to be three motors, and so this, I'll probably have them staggered, because there will have to be one of these assemblies for each chain. So I'll probably stack with them with one here, there, and then another one over here. And so I want the chain to come back this way and go back that way. And I'll probably make it a very tall tower going up so that I can store as much of these pins on one chain as possible. 
And I forgot to mention that this shaft right here is going to be hooked up to a hand crank and there's going to be three cranks, one for each motor, and that's going to be used to position the robot for teaching it and programming it. And so it's either hooked up to the motor as the input, or you can switch it this way and it'll be hooked up to the crank as the input. But the crank and the motor both turn the same shaft that controls the robot. Maybe I can get a better view of it, but it's just that simple transmission right here, except it has a small gear right here, so it's two of them side by side. And you can see the switching right here. The first thing I'm actually going to build is a wheel for this chain because on this side, it bends around a red gear just like any chain does. But if you try to turn it the other way, if I can... <laughs> oh no, well, that's not good. This is why the chain hook direction matters, because from here, it can easily come off. But if you were to do it this way, and you bend it like that, doesn't want to because it's hooked that direction. So I'll have to make sure to do that when I make the actual chain. But like I was saying, it's easy to turn in this direction, but in this direction there's that's not going to be turnable by a gear and besides we have these pins sticking out. So the first thing I have to make is a wheel that just about fits that radius there so it'll be about that big and that wheel has is going to be used so the chain can move in, in that direction when it comes out to the transmission. That way I can have a loop and make it go like in this pattern and back around. So I'll be able to extend it and have as much chain as I want even though I think I only have the pieces to make there be maybe two loops or so. But you'll know what I mean when I actually build it. This is about as simple as it gets. Hopefully I can use an octagon instead of having to make an actual circle for the wheel. Here's our minimum radius and it fits pretty well in there. It even kind of goes inside of the green connectors a little bit so it um, means it locks it in position if it tries to go that way. I might have to make some other rails along the outside to keep it aligned, but I think this will work. Next, I need to make, well, pretty much I need to make this entire loop out of the chain, and that's going to be maybe 32 feet just for one, and there has to be three of them, so that will take a while. Here it is, the robot is finished. Oh no. One thing I forgot to explain is what the actual robot arm is going to be like. Uh, I thought I would just do that now instead of waiting. This is just a very crude example of how I want it to be. So we have a rotation at the base, and there's a rotation at the end of that arm and at the end of that one. Just imagine this gray rod can slide up and down, but I can't really do it. But this will allow any position any item that's on the end here to be positioned in 3D space and hopefully it won't come apart like that. But yeah, um, I just needed to explain that so that you weren't wondering how the actual arm was going to be built for like several videos because I probably won't get to that part for quite a while. I'm more so concerned about the controls of the robot at this point. Here's the completed storage tower. It goes all the way up to the ceiling, so it's almost 8 feet tall. So that is about 32 feet of chain, or I'm going to call this the tape because that's what's storing all the information. This one is here to signal um, when the tape starts or stops. 
because I might need to use that later on. Here's where it'll be powered from. I can't really turn it right now because I haven't made like um, guard, like guardrail to keep this off the ground. So it's pretty unsmooth right now, but it's not going to be that way. This is what will be hooked up to the motor. It'll be hooked up to this rod right here, from there to there. Here's the wheels that I was talking about. I just decided to make them a little bit wider to give it some more clearance. This wheel right here is used as a tension wheel, so it can adjust up and down to make the chain be as tight as it needs to be. So if I push all the way down, you can see that going up. I want to make sure to keep it as tight as possible without stretching it out too much because this chain does stretch out over time. The nice thing about this tape design is that this can be extended as far back as you want and so it can have as many loops as it needs. I'm sure this could have been made more compact if I made the chain come around here and go like that, but I didn't want to have that many wheels and that's really only necessary if you have like five loops or so, but this is only two loops. So next I will have to figure out how to make these pins either that way or that way activate the transmission. And there are lots of different ways to do that, but I'll explain that later. I think that just about wraps up today's episode. I am making these videos in real time, unlike the last series, so that one I recorded the videos in like December and then I would upload them in the summer. But right now, today is April 1st. I don't know when I'll release this, maybe in two weeks from now, but you'll see when it gets uploaded. Because I'm doing the videos like that, this will allow people to actually give feedback as I'm building it and actually be more into the building process. Because I'm uploading the videos this way, this might also mean that there are long pauses between them, so it will not be as consistent as last time. Right now I'm trying to get a video out every two weeks. That will be my goal, but of course um, there will be lots of things that are unpredictable that happen. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and all that good stuff. And thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next episode.